And as much fun as it is to pick the berries, the farm manager says it's even better to taste them, saying that they're much fresher than the ones at the store. The town of Norway has some of the oldest water pipes in the state, and it's communities like this one that the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act can help. The lowest number you'll see at a gas station in Columbia is 399 here at this sit-go on Hunt Club Road. However, currently at the pumps, there is no gas. Carolina Crossroads is due to take five phases and last until 2029 and cost more than $1 billion. However, commuters in the Columbia area say the project is more than overdue. And the Lenore House next door to the store is almost as unique. It was ordered in a 1900 Sears catalog and arrived via the railroad. On the road in Horatio, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. The Oaks at St. Anna's is named after a park in the Lion Street neighborhood, and the name comes from a historical church that was in the area. One local resident believes the addition of the project will help improve his neighborhood. Many residents decided to brave the rain, but if you didn't make it out Friday night, there's plenty of fun to be had all weekend long. Reporting in Batesburg, Leesville, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. In addition to great people, Sumter also has a great downtown. It features an opera house, which this year celebrates its 125th anniversary. On the road in Sumter, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. This is the transformation from being a citizen to a soldier. That transformation happens on the more than 50,000 acre installation known as Fort Jackson. So we have a 10 week program uh, of basic combat training, and this is the middle phase uh, that we spend about three weeks uh, making sure that they are competent in their in their weapon system. The first part of that consists of learning weapon safety. Always treat this weapon as if it is loaded, even when we know it's not. We keep our fingers straight and off the trigger until we're ready to engage the weapon system at a target. We don't ever put this weapon at anything that we don't intend to destroy. Weapon safety also includes being sure of your target and what's around it and keeping the gun on safe until you intend to fire. Soldiers also have to learn how to disassemble their weapon and put it back together. So the M4 consists of uh, the barrel. This is the upper receiver, the lower receiver, the trigger assembly, the buttstock. Uh, these are the parts broken down. You have your bolt carrier, your firing pin. This is the bolt broken down, the charging handle. Right. To pass basic marksmanship, soldiers have to score 23 out of 40, make 23 to 29 for marksmen. 30 to 35 for sharpshooter and 36 to 40 for expert. Well, it's a huge learning curve, right? And what we what we see when we do something basic uh, in basic rifle marksmanship is those that come here that have never been exposed to, to weapon systems before actually learn the right skills at an increased rate. As one of those who has not been exposed to weapon systems, I gave it a try with the help of Sergeant Camacho. Good. And I think what you'll find is the level of instruction for, from our cadre, the drill sergeants that are here, is the best in the world. And what we want to produce is the best soldiers in the world. And we do that in the gateway we call Fort Jackson every single day. Reporting at Fort Jackson, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. We must have a strong economy. We must have a strong education system. We must take care of our very precious environment. The Democrats who hope to challenge McMaster's re-election bid do not think he is the right person to lead the Palmetto State. I want to take South Carolina out of the past and bring South Carolina into the future. And we can't do that if we have old leadership. People are looking for a fighter. They're looking for change. And most importantly, they're looking for somebody who know that they know has the courage to lead on the tough issues that we're facing. And we haven't had that. Um, we definitely don't have it in Henry McMaster. We don't have it, I don't believe, I haven't seen that we have it in, in Joe Cunningham. Joe Cunningham says he approves of early voting, but says the state could do more to make elections better. I think we're one of five states that still has straight ticket voting. We still need to get away with that. That just creates more partisanship. Uh, but I think this is a step in the right direction. And I'm glad that, that we have two weeks of, uh, you know, of of early voting uh, with, with no excuses. And I think it's, it's a great step forward. We still have ways to go, though. He adds that South Carolina also has a ways to go when it comes to education. Well, we want to pay our teachers more. You know, our, our teachers are near dead last in teacher pay. That's why they're leaving in droves. One out of seven teachers left just this last, last year. 
Teacher pay is something Governor McMaster also hopes to improve, but says he has been working on it since taking office. Since I got here, we started off at 30000 for a brand new teacher. We've gotten it up to 36000 That's not enough. I'm asking for 40000 If we can do that, and the others will go up in, uh, 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 as well. But that's just for starters. We need to have the best teachers in South Carolina that we can get. And uh, we got a lot of people willing, but we're not paying them enough, in my opinion. McLeod says that not only teachers, but all South Carolinians need more money. She emphasizes a message of equity for the state's residents. I just think you shouldn't have to know somebody to be somebody who matters in this state. South Carolina can and should be a place where all of us can thrive. And I'm working hard to make that a reality. The state senator says she has been working on issues such as gun law reform, Medicaid expansion, and more, but believes she would have more power to make these changes happen as governor. In many ways, when I am in the South Carolina Senate, it feels like 1922 instead of 2022, and I want us to usher our state into the 21st century when it comes to the issues that all of us care about, working people. Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. Lori Wanamaker has been wanting her family to see her graduate. My children, my mom, especially my mom, my mom, get to see her baby walk across the stage. I feel like I'm 18. <laughs> now 49, she says getting a GED at 18 just was not possible at the time. 12th grade, I had a child early, and then once I started having children, I still wasn't able to go. So I ended up going to get my beautician, my cosmetology license. Wanamaker has owned Little House of Styles for more than two decades. She needed a GED to pursue an instructor's license. Fortunately, her clients were flexible enough for that to happen. I was able to work around my clients to go back to school. So all my clients were so proud of me, they didn't mind coming later in the day to get their hair done so I can go in the morning. And the reason why I really wanted to go in the morning because I would have more time. They had more time with the students. So I just was like a little kid in the in, in the first grade when I went, you know, and I was just so excited to go. But even with the excitement of going to the Lexington II adult education program, she ran into a learning curve when returning to school. So a lot of things change. So I really had to learn how to do certain maths that I never knew. And Miss Roger, she's a great teacher. Miss All, she's a wonderful teacher. And I'm just so thankful for them because they really took their time to help me. Her fellow graduates also spoke highly of the adult education program teachers. Lamonte Hammond said he tried to get his GED in the past, but never completed doing so until now. The wonderful women that listened to adult education never gave up on me. They were patient, kind, and assured me that I was capable. Wanamaker echoes the same words and says she hopes her graduation is a positive example for others. You can do anything that you put your mind to. Anything is possible. But you got to warn it first. Reporting at Airport High School, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. We created this to hopefully stop violence and things that are going on in our nation and to honor these people. So the honor band was created. What do you do when you lose a loved one? You honor them. And so that's why we started this, to honor people that lose their lives. One of the people he hopes to honor is his late wife, a Benedict College graduate who died in 2007. She passed the breast cancer and when they had the shooting at Virginia Tech, I was burying my wife. I was hurting. I'm, I'm just sad. And the Monday they had the shooting, I was burying my wife here in Columbia, South Carolina. So it touched my heart to go there to be with them. Went there for a day on the parade field at Virginia Tech, and I came back and created a message called Love, Forgive, Please Stop the Violence. His son also passed away from cancer and his brother from gun violence. Shaw's friend and USC track coach Curtis Fry thought that his message would be good motivation for his team. Sometimes they think that maybe they got, they're nervous and, and they feel like it's too much pressure, but when you think of it as a blessing that you are fortunate, and uh, Mr. Shaw is one that makes, gets us to feel how blessed and fortunate we are. Coach Fry says he feels blessed for leading the Gamecock track team for 26 years. It's hanging out with the young people and it is also making an impact on their lives. Looking back and see how many persons we got that are lawyers, doctors, engineers that were national champions. Giving kids an opportunity to come to a great university. 
Some of the track team members also have a great opportunity next week as they head to Bloomington, Indiana for the East Regionals. The top performers there compete for the national championship in Eugene, Oregon. You know, we've got 27 going. If we can have 14, 14 in Oregon, I'll be quite happy. Shaw gave the whole team honor bands before they head off for competition. When they're heading to the race, I want them to know they got some people that are caring about them and wanting them to do well, but also to say, you know, get out there and represent your families, your moms, your dad. That's what I want to do with my life. Make someone else proud of what I do, and that's what they're doing as athletes here. Reporting at the Sheila and Morris Craiger track, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News.